Hello everybody, my name is Zach and welcome to Brokenomics. Today we're going to be discussing Discrete. So what is Discrete? Discrete is a privacy network essentially, which includes a token called the DIS, smart contracts and many many other cool things. So let's get into it. First things first, Discrete is not a blockchain per se, it uses something different called a DAG. Hey, Do you like DAGs? We have Brokenomics, we like DAGs. So what is a DAG? A DAG is directed at acyclic graph. So it isn't proof of work like Bitcoin, nor proof of stake like something like Cardano. So let's break this down. Direct in this case means that the transaction sequences, though not linear in nature, follow a particular direction on a plot if charted. Acyclic, which is probably the most important term of the DAG, acyclic means what it sounds like, it means there's like no cycling backwards. In essence, no nodes of the blockchain can reference itself or be its own mother node. And graphs, is the interlaced network forms a graph-like topology in which nodes are connected to other nodes. DAG is also fork-free. Common randomness is needed, so therefore Discrete has set up randomness beacons which operate in a distributed manner without a trusted setup. And I'm gonna just reference, if you want to learn more about this, there's a lot more in info in the technical paper, so I've linked that in the description as well. In a previous video on Monero, I talked about ring signatures. This is when you sign a transaction and it's mixed up with 10 other signatures to create an anonymity. However, 10 isn't that many, and it does take some time for the Monero network to confirm the transaction. Discrete gets around all of this through some really neat tech. Your signature is not split up between 10, but rather 63 other participants. And this is done without sacrificing speed, which is an absolutely huge improvement. Trustless trust is one of the major concepts that Satoshi managed to solve, aka the Byzantine's general problem. And how a blockchain comes to consensus has been a hot topic ever since. Proof of work, proof of stake, etc. Discrete so uses Aleph, which is a powerful generic consensus mechanism that achieves over 100,000 transactions per second, with an average time of about 5 seconds. If you can imagine Visa deals with only 65,000 transactions per second only, I know. So the, the algorithm has been peer reviewed and has also seen many numerous tests by the discrete team. So some super tech here. Interoperability is basically just blockchains talking to one another. We all know Ethereum has had and is having major scaling issues. And Polkadot was created to give like a layer one solution, essentially creating generic blockchains vis-a-vis -vis like blockchains as a service, like and this has been called a parachain. Discrete, on the other hand, aims to build a generic decentralized network. So not like a layer one solutions per se, but like rather a layer zero. And it won't be called a parachain, it'll be called a paranet. The main discrete network can be seen like a kind of a hub on a bicycle wheel with all the spokes representing things like contract data, user data, history of transactions of the network, etc. However, the method for which computation is achieved is decoupled from the main discrete network altogether. So this discrete compute network, i.e. DCN, is a paranet alongside the main discrete network. Discrete provides an auxiliary decentralized network, which I just previously mentioned called a discrete compute network or the DCN. This helps one perform complex tasks like lending, auctions, e-voting, etc. AKA, it's essentially just specifically there for executing smart contracts. This is done by special nodes called trustless autonomous compute nodes, and they provide secure computational power to the DCN or the discrete compute network. And they also receive rewards for their efforts. If one of these nodes is deemed malicious, a challenge can be issued to the suspected node and they can be kicked off I assume. There's also a programming language called the script which helps execute these smart contracts. Cheers for that Zach. So in terms of the tokenomics we've got 270 million total DIS tokens. 90 million of these will be available pre-launch uh, and the other 180 million following the mainnet launch which is designated for mid-2022 these will be mined over the following 20 years. So of the 90 million available before mainnet, we've got 60 million designated for the IDO, 20 million used for the liquidity pool, 5 million for development wallet and 5 million lock, time locked for five months. Um, the price, and we'll go into the sale details in a minute, but it starts at 10 cents USD, although it is in fact actually discounted at the minute because at the start of phase one of the launch pad or uh, the pre-sale, they were actually pegged when BNB was worth, I think about 400 or $410 and it's down at about 350 I think at the minute. So 
there's a bit of a discount there until they reset the peg in phase two. Um, if I pull over the website for a minute, uh, it's a nice website, very clean, um, with the technical people involved in the team that Zach's going to talk about in a bit. It's kind of what you'd expect. Um, just if I scroll down a touch here, you can read their technical paper. And to give you a taster of it, I mean, you can see um, some of the maths here in terms of the privacy algorithms and stuff like that are very involved. But the first few pages are actually really helpful as, as an overview of exactly what the project does in, in a bit more detail than we're covering here. So I would really encourage people to obviously always do your own research and um, have a look at that. Uh, in terms of their roadmap, um, so what they have done so far is uh, between quarter one and quarter two of this year, they've hit all their targets so far. So that's really good to see and uh, are on course for their uh, mainnet launch uh, in quarter two of 2022 and uh, listing DIS on the exchange. Um, in terms of the IDO presale, so the um, first uh, phase of the presale ends on August 3rd, again, with uh, DIS pegged uh, to BNB at, I think, $413 it was. Uh, so there is a slight discount on the 10 cent per token they're saying trading there, but this will be reset on August 3rd. And then from that stage, it'll work its way from 10 cent up to 50 cent per DIS token over the next 365 days. So that'll work out as a little over 10, 10, a tenth of a cent per day. Uh, it will go up and uh, it will be repegged to BNB every day as well. So that's the details with the sale. Check it out on getdiscreet.org. Uh, if I pull back here, like if you're interested in getting the tokens, it's a simple process. Install your MetaMask, connect to the Binance Smart Chain wallet, transfer the BSC to MetaMask that you can get on Binance or Dex or wherever, and then just go to getdiscreet.org and uh, here's, the, here's what you'll see. Just this. Uh, I did actually buy some of these the other day. Um, you can see that this part of the IDO ends in just uh, almost three days or two days, 22 hours. Uh, this phase ends. Yeah, read the terms and conditions, check them out, uh, connect to your MetaMask and uh, actually a window pops up, which is quite handy, that automatically adds the token to your wallet because I know sometimes, uh, especially with new projects, you have to add them manually. But uh, yeah, that's the details of the sale. Just, you know, something that interested me, piqued my interest and um, I grabbed a few of, uh, obviously not financial advice, just sharing something with you guys that I found interesting. So I'll hand you back over to Zach. Recently, the European Union started a crackdown on crypto asset providers, aka centralized exchanges, and they've released proposal legislation. The proposal declares, quote unquote, in order to ensure effective application of AML requirements to crypto assets, it's necessary necessary to prohibit the provision and custody of anonymous crypto asset wallets by crypto asset service provider. AKA centralized exchanges cannot provide services for anonymous crypto assets like Monero. Again, I've left a whole 92 page report in the description if you like a bit of light bedtime reading. Discrete, however, kind of has its foot on both, fences, on both sides of the fence here because it allows for both transparent and shielded transactions. Under this proposed legislation, anyone could legally operate a fully autonomous discrete node within the EU, but would need to de-shield any transactions sent to a centralized exchange within Europe. Likewise, there's nothing in the legislation that will prevent discrete from being listed on centralized exchanges in Europe, with the understanding that these exchanges would enable and operate exclusively transparent transactions on the discrete network. As we've learned, transactions can be both public and private on the discrete network depending on your choice. The same is the case for smart contracts, with some portions being public and the others being private depending on what you want. Hawk's approach is used to make this happen. Public contract code can be executed very similarly to contracts, smart contracts on the Ethereum's virtual machine. Private contract code will compile to an arithmetic circuit for evaluation and proof by a node in the discrete network. The team is a wholly international affair, like many blockchain projects, with a couple of members in Europe, another in North America, some in Canada. The co-founder, Frederick, is a Danish-born software dev who built and ran a Nordic crypto exchange called Coin Nordic, which he later sold. Brandon Koner, which is a name I'm probably mispronouncing, is also the co-founder. He's based in North America with a background in advanced mathematics and computer science, who no doubt will be happy to explain things like the Fiat Shamrock transformations, Peterson commitments, and many other fun technical things that if you want to find out more about are in, as you guessed it, the technical paper. Rick 
Funk Jorgensen, who no doubt has the coolest name of the group, is a software dev from Denmark as well, a back-end polygot with mad skills in building and scaling sustainable services that can run under a heavy load, which no doubt the discrete network will need. After that we have Henrik Phil Horlinson, which is a name I'm obviously butchering again, who is a core developer and researcher mainly focusing on theoretical computer science and functional programming. He is helping build the Descript programming language, which is the native language for Discrete. Next we have Shan Hak Manajan, again a name I'm butchering, I'm really sorry, sorry everyone, is a front-end dev mainly using React.js with an ability to create intuitive UI and UX. The final two members are part of the communications team with Fraser Tingle from Canada. He's two decades worth of experience in many communication fields and builds a lot of experience to the project. And finally we've Pascal Home. he's 16 years worth of experience working in London, working in branding and creative strategist leads. And over the past two years he's been focusing on blockchain projects. Here I'm just going to give a quick overview of some of the features. I've tried to hit upon as many as I can in this video, however if I went into mad detail the thing would be like 30 minutes long. So I really recommend if you're curious to read a technical paper. Some of the features include direct acidic graph, a novel ALF consensus implementation, trippage implementation, dandelion double plus integration for network autonomy, previously unseen consensus throughput and speed like 100,000 transactions per second, negative transaction fees like under like a cent one cent US dollar trustless autonomous computer nodes fully automatic automated contracts validated by bulletproof plus descript which is a programming language for the blockchain paranets untraceable payments unlinkable transactions resistance to blockchain analysis fair token distribution and mining a utilitarian network and flexible new decentralized paradigm guys I'd really recommend to have a good look at this project because uh, it's fascinating and has a lot a lot of potential you've been with watching Brokenomics I've been Zach and thank you very much